but we do need a decision by the board to say no pamphlet. Yeah. Yes to the flyer. No pamphlet. That's my that's my vote. No pamphlet and a flyer. That's Two. mine. So so you're done if somebody came in and said, Well, I'll write a check for ten grand for the whole pamphlet. No. I'm not doing that. Well, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. So even even if that would be the situation. Well, I just yeah, I'm sure I, that's I, the case when you arrive at a decision that you've given it thought that it ain't gonna happen. People from Mars yeah. come down here and you know, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, they're not willing to write a check for a lot of other things, but they want to write a check for a specific reason. Right. And the two that I heard comment about it were in opposite were in opposition to the ordinances. So that does not, for me, pass the smell test if somebody is for or against something, anything, that they are part of the referendum to get on the ballot, that they then come in and say, well, I'm going to pay you to get this voter's pamphlet on there, which for the purpose of getting their opinion in there, what it is is, is, is buying preference. Uh, last week, uh, a citizen brought in uh, about four, fifty four hundred dollars uh, which was the difference between the, what the county had approved to put out a flyer that gave the entire text of the ordinances and the voters pamphlet and uh, then the, the next day the city council approved then also paying uh, that same amount for the voters pamphlet the difference between the two so uh, be, uh, of course Commissioner Heck is gone right now but uh, that will have to be taken up by the board and we will do that when he comes back I believe we have until the end of the first week of September something about the fifth I believe on under the state law to be able to make that decision as to whether we do or don't have a voters pamphlet uh, I think that when we have a government entity that steps forward that actually has a measure on the ballot that wishes to pay for it I think that's a very good uh, thing to do. Uh, I certainly have uh, some reservations about a private citizen, a uh, private citizen's group or a lobby organization who has a vested interest in whatever is on the ballot coming in and uh, purchasing um, the time on that ballot or paying for the voter's pamphlet. So I think that probably in, in the long run that we uh, would consider probably the government to be the better one uh, to to pay for a voter's pamphlet. Because some people could in, infer if you take money from a private individual, private lobby organization, that they are purchasing the opportunity to campaign. It's amazing what one person can do. I'm not talking about Sandy Casanelli. I'm certainly not talking about myself. I'm talking about Cheryl Walker. The main opposition to this from the beginning was Cheryl Walker. She was the one that said, you know, I'm going to have to paraphrase here. I have it on tape. She was the one that said, if we allow people to put these, their opinions in the voters' pamphlet, well, they'll just be buying the election. That's what we always do with voters' pamphlet. They'll be able to put their opinions in there, and I've only heard from people who are opposed to it. That's right. What I find distasteful is when someone who purports to be a reporter of fact does not report fact. Yesterday on KGA radio, Mr. Matthews said that um, I was the main opposition to a voter's pamphlet, that I opposed the voter's pamphlet. Uh, this is absolutely not true. I made the statements, and I have always made the statement, that the county does not have the money to produce the voter's pamphlet. I supported putting out a flyer. The money has come in from two different sources for a voter's pamphlet. My belief is that no single person, group of people, lobby organization, or any other special interest who has a vested interest in a measure that is on the ballot should be able to purchase a voter's pamphlet, which is providing money to us. Another government entity I think is appropriate. We have the city to do that, and I think, in my opinion, we should move forward with it. And that's what I said on the radio yesterday. So I also prefaced my statement yesterday with the fact that I could not speak for the board. The board had not made a decision. So that was my opinion, and it's still my opinion. The vested interest aspect of, there's three funding streams for paying for this voter's pamphlet. There's the citizens, the city, and the county. 
none of which um, provided all of the funds necessary for a voter's pamphlet, but cumulatively, I think they do. The city, by all measure, has a vested interest in the election coming up. So that argument, in my mind, and I don't, I don't need to. This isn't a debate today on on the merits of how we're getting to the financing of this pamphlet. The county has a vested interest. There, there's a an advocacy effort every time we discuss the ordinances, and rightfully so by those who support them, because I, I would not want to advocate for a measure if I supported it. Um, so. I think we all have a vested interest from a public standpoint, and you can't get devoid of that by being an elected official or a governing body. So that does not, for me, pass the smell test if somebody is for or against something, anything, that they are part of the referendum to get on the ballot, that they then come in and say, well, I'm going to pay to get this voter's pamphlet on there, mm -hmm. which for the purpose of getting their opinion in there. 